Are you trying to break into cybersecurity in the year 2021? Maybe you're trying to learn more about cybersecurity. Well, you've come to the right place because in this video, we're going to walk through the best entry level cybersecurity certifications to get in the year 2021. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses about distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you check out my getting started link in the description and sign up for my newsletter to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Hello, everybody. As we're closing on the end of 2020, it's that time where we start to make our career plans for 2021. We're going to be focusing on entry-level cybersecurity certifications to help people stand out in job applications and to break into the cybersecurity field. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is cybersecurity is not typically an area where people start off their careers because much of what you're going to learn is going to build off of some foundational knowledge. If you haven't built up that foundational knowledge that I'm talking about, things like how networks work, and navigating through operating systems, then make sure that you grab a free copy of my ebook and I will actually give you a roadmap of things that you need to learn. Without any more delay, let's start diving into the list of certifications and I'll also list sources that you can use to prepare for any of these certifications. The SSCP from ISC Squared is the fifth best entry level cybersecurity certification for 2021. Now, ISC Squared is the same vendor who creates the CISSP certification which is known as the gold standard in cybersecurity. SSCP is the CISP's little brother, and it covers a lot of that same information, but for somebody who needs a little bit more technical focus instead of that managerial focus. The main downside of the SSCP is that it really hasn't taken off in the industry like some of these other entry-level certifications. Now, that doesn't mean that the information doesn't overlap or provide you with what you need to know as an entry-level employee, but keep in mind, you might not see the certification listed in job postings. You might not even have hiring managers that know what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the website. All right, so here is the website for the SSCP, and that's the Systems Security Certified Practitioner. And again, that is from ISC Squared, the same people that make the CISSP certification that you might have heard of. And so if we scroll down here, you can see some different facts about it. So what kind of job titles get the SSCP? Well. Network security engineer, security consultant, specialist, system administrator, and so on and so forth. And then if we go ahead and we go to the register and prepare for exam, you can see the different domains that are covered in the SSCP. So you're going to see a lot of these domains on any security certification that you take, especially one that covers a whole bunch of different topics. So access controls, security operations and administration, talk about risk, incident response, and so on a lot of very good things that you need to know as a security professional. Now, if we go ahead and go to the get certified tab here, we can see a little bit more information about how we can get certified. So for the SSCP, you do have to have at least one year of cumulative paid work experience in order to qualify for the certification. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can take the exam at any point. You do not have to have that one year of experience requirement met. However, if you don't have that experience met, then you're going to be what's called an associate of ISC Square. And basically that just means you don't have enough experience yet to get the actual certification. When you pass the exam, if you have the experience, you have to actually submit your resume and your qualifications for ISC Square to validate your experience. And so that's very consistent across the board with all of ISC Square's certifications is they have experience requirements, not recommendations. So you're actually going to have to get endorsed by somebody else and then ISC Squared will validate that information. Coming in at the number four certification is the GSEC from GIAC. Now GIAC is a certification vendor who's known for providing tremendous valued certifications on just about everything in cybersecurity. From basics to penetration testing to advanced forensics, they have it all. Now, to be completely honest, the only reason why the GSEC is so low is because the training is usually pretty expensive 
for most people. A single course with the exam is going to run you in excess of 7,000 US dollars. That's pretty expensive. Typically, the people that attend the training for the certification, which is held by SANS, are being sponsored by their employer. Now, let this be a lesson that if you find an employer that's willing to give you a lot of training, especially when it comes to SANS training, you should almost always take it. Now, I personally have three different GEAC certifications, including the GSEC, but it's hard to push people towards it when not everybody has those training budgets to attend. Let's go ahead and switch over to the website now. Okay, so this is the website for the GSEC or the GEAC Security Essentials Certification. Now, again, with this certification, it's a very well-known certification that is an awesome one to get, but it does tend to be a little bit on the pricey side, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But if we scroll down and look at more information here, you can see the different areas covered. So you'll see a lot of similar things. So cryptography, incident handling and response, Windows, web communication, so a lot of very similar things as on the SSCP. Who's the GSEC for? Security professionals, security managers, operations professionals, auditors, penetration testers, and so much more. If we look at the actual exam here, we have one proctored exam, 180 questions. Now this is gonna be a relatively long exam. You get five hours to take the exam and you have to pass with at least a score of 73%. Now on all GEAC certifications, they are going to be longer exams like that. That's one of those things that you need to kind of get used to if you're gonna work in cybersecurity and take these certifications. A lot of the more advanced certifications are longer exams. And that doesn't mean that you're going to specifically take five hours in this case for the exam, but keep that in mind. You get a lot of time because it's probably gonna take you a while to take the exam. Now this is the registration page to sign up for the GEAC certification attempt. Now, if we scroll down here, you can attempt just the exam. You do not have to take a training course for it, but I'll show you here in a second how that affects the cost. And honestly, it does help you to take the actual course. But if you just want to do the exam, it's going to run you about $2,000. So $1,999. Now, this is the course for the GSEC. This is the SEC 401 course, Security Essentials Bootcamp Style. Now, the price for this course, $7,000. This is what I was talking about because the price of the course plus the exam, you're talking about $9,000. Plus, if you had to travel anywhere, obviously, as of this recording, there's not a lot of people that are traveling to these different boot camps and courses. But in normal times, if you had to travel somewhere, you would also have to get a hotel as well. So, Keep that in mind that there are possibly additional expenses, but with the course and the exam, $9,000. That's pretty expensive. Now on the plus side of that, when you take the course, you actually get all of the books and the materials that the exam is made off of. So that's an important concept because the exam covers a lot of different information and you can get that information elsewhere. It's not proprietary information. However, if you don't have the official courseware for the course from SANS, then you're going to have to piece together a lot of different resources. All of the information is not necessarily in the same spot. So it's a huge benefit to actually go to the course. Plus there's a lot of networking opportunities that happen with these courses. At the number three spot for 2021, we have three different options. The Cisco Cyber Ops Associate, the Blue Team Level 1 Certification, also called the BTL1, and the CompTIA CYSA+. Now, you might be wondering why I have three different certifications instead of just picking the best. Well, the fact is that all of these certifications cover a lot of the same information, but there are reasons why I would pick one over the other. Before we dive into the website of each certification, I actually want to give you a brief explanation about each choice. So first, we have the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate. When it comes to technology and especially networking, most people know who Cisco is. Cisco is very well known for their professional certifications, such as the CCNA, CCNP, and the CCIE levels. With that being said, we know that Cisco has tremendous funds and resources to make phenomenal training courses and the ability to give you hands-on experience with real Cisco technology. There's a certain aura around Cisco certifications that employers really respect in candidates who've achieved either one or lots of Cisco certifications. Now it's been like that for a very long time, which believe it or not, 
that does count when you look for jobs. Second, we have the Blue Team Level 1 certification. Now, this certification was released in the summer of 2020, and it really focuses on hands-on learning. One of the new trends in certifications is to start requiring candidates to perform some kind of practical exam, so do some tasks to complete the certification. This strategy has a lot of benefits for both the test taker because we truly feel like we know the material to do the job and an employer because they need to know that a candidate has the appropriate skill level. Now I'm bringing this up because the blue team level one certification actually requires you to do various exercises in a lab environment. And then you actually have to document your findings in a report. The third option is the CYSA plus from CompTIA. Now CompTIA, just like Cisco has a tremendous reputation for producing qualified candidates specifically for entry-level technology positions. With CompTIA certifications and exams, the cost is usually always reasonable and the difficulty is right on par for entry-level staff. CompTIA also makes sure that their exams are vendor neutral so that you can really learn those core concepts. Unfortunately, with CompTIA exams, you don't typically have a lot of lab exercises both on the exam and in training environments. With that being said, you can still learn a lot of valuable information at a lower cost, but you might have to do a little bit of extra work. Let's go ahead and take a look at each certification's website so that you can see for yourself. This is the website for the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate. Now you can see that Cisco does support online remote exams. So that's awesome from taking an exam standpoint. For this specific certification, there is one exam. Okay, so it's the CyberOps 200-201. Now, if we look at this recommended training here, and we'll go ahead and go by e-learning. Now, this is the official training for the Cisco Certified CyberOps Associate Certification. Now, it runs $800, and you get access for 180 days. Now, the real benefit for getting the CyberOps Associate Certification is if you can do the official training because you're going to get labs on things like network security monitoring and other important concepts, even potentially Cisco technology that you'll get to use without having to go buy it. That stuff is pretty expensive if you're just gonna buy it to put in a lab and your job might not have the ability to let you get hands on with that technology. So the real benefit of the CyberOps Associate is if you can take the official course. This is the website for the security blue team level certifications. Now, blue team level one was released in the summer of 2020, and you can see it's for junior level analysts. You can also see that they've released a blue team level two for the professional level, and then they have a level three that's planned. Now that's important. Keep that in mind for future certifications that they are starting to release more certification levels. But if we go to the blue team level one certification, you can see that you get three months access. It's meant for zero to two years of experience. And then the cost is right here. And then you can convert that to whatever your local currency is. But it's pretty reasonable for the certification and the training. You get 300 lessons. That's a lot of training. If we scroll down here, we can see a little bit more about the actual certification. Now, if we look at the course content, security fundamentals, phishing analysis, threat intelligence, digital forensics, incident response, and SIM. So you get a lot of hands-on type exercises and training with this certification. Remember, that's huge. This is the website for the CompTIA CYSA Plus. And just as a reminder, I am putting a free course on YouTube for everybody to enjoy. So if you want to study for the CYSA Plus, make sure that you check out my course. It's also available on my website where you can get it without ads if you sign up for a membership subscription. Now, if we scroll down here and we look a little bit more about the certification, there are two different versions as of this recording that are available. You have the 001 and the 002. My course is for the newer version, so it's not for the older version. But if we look at what is going to be on the exam and what's covered, we talk about intelligence and threat detection techniques, analyzing data, addressing vulnerabilities, and again, a lot of good, useful information. If we scroll down here a little bit more, you can also see some job titles that have this certification or that want this certification. So security analyst, Threat Intelligence Analyst, Security Engineer, Compliance Analyst, Threat Hunter. 
and we keep scrolling down a little bit more you can see the details for the two different exams again 001 is going to be retired eventually here on april 23rd 2021 and then the 002 is the newer version that just came out earlier in 2020 so in april and you get a maximum 85 questions you get multiple choice and performance-based questions 165 minutes for the exam now with comptia they don't have specific experience requirements but they do generally provide a recommended amount so in this case they're saying a minimum of four years of hands-on information security experience is recommended but it's not required and then if we look at the price 359 us dollars i hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far if you are make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video and if you think of any questions let me know down in the comment section below also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements all right let's get back to the content even though security plus has slipped from previous entry-level certification lists that i've made it still has a lot of value one major reason is that companies know who CompTIA is and they're familiar with the Security Plus certification. Sometimes getting the newest certification isn't as ideal as achieving a well-known certification, something like the Security Plus. CompTIA specializes in entry-level certifications, so the Security Plus is the appropriate difficulty for somebody that's entry-level and it's not going to be super expensive. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that passing the Security Plus is going to guarantee you a job or that it will give you all the skills necessary be a competent security analyst. But what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you it's a solid step in the right direction of where you wanna go. By passing the Security Plus, you'll actually have a lot of core knowledge that other certifications and skills build upon. So don't just discount the Security Plus because it's not the number one certification. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Security Plus website. This is the Security Plus website from CompTIA. And Security Plus is a very well-known certification in the industry. We go ahead and scroll down here we can see a little bit more now just like the cysa plus there's two versions that are out there now for the security plus currently as of this recording but as far as what the actual certification covers it covers attacks threats and vulnerabilities architecture and design implementation operations and incident response governance risk and compliance now if we compare the two certifications the cysa plus and the security plus the CYSA plus is a higher level certification than the security plus. It would be considered more advanced. So keep that in mind when you're looking at different certifications. But if we continue to scroll down here, we can look at the two different exams. So 501 is the older exam. Now I have a course that's already done on 501. If you go to my website, you can sign up for that and you can view the course and enjoy that and pass the exam. The 501 version will be retired in july of 2021 so keep that in mind if you're getting ready to study right now go ahead you can definitely knock it out before that happens but depending on when you watch this video that may or may not be an option 601 is the new version that was just released november 12th 2020 and i will have a course for this newer version but as far as the actual exams you have 90 questions you have multiple choice and performance-based questions and then you get 90 minutes to pass the exam so remember when we were talking about the GIAC certifications, those are very long, five hours for the GSEC. On here, you only get 90 minutes, so an hour and a half. And if we scroll down, we look at the price, 349 US dollars. All right, the moment that you've all been waiting for, the best entry-level certification for the year 2021 is going to be for the cloud. If you've been living under a rock, then you probably aren't aware that companies everywhere are trying to make aggressive shifts to the cloud. Companies use the cloud for storage, processing power, and all kinds of different ways to operate their business. When it comes to certifications and trying to land a job, if you wanna stand out with important skills, you really wanna set yourself apart from other applicants. Hear me when I say this, there are seasoned professionals that aren't even familiar with cloud. So if you can come in as an entry-level person and have solid cloud knowledge, you're gonna be extremely valuable. And you might be asking, well, there's several cloud vendors out there, so which certification should I get? Well, great question. I'm going to give you a few options, but if you just want a blanket answer, then I would start working towards the AWS Certified Security Specialty. Although vendors like Microsoft Azure are starting to grow in their market share, the safest vendor specific path is still with AWS. They have the largest market share. Now, with all that being said, if you're in a job where you're using something like Microsoft Azure or some other vendor 
then I would get certified in that first. Microsoft Azure certification is the Microsoft Certified Azure Security Engineer Associate. Let's go ahead and pull up the websites for AWS and Azure. Here we have the AWS Certified Security Specialty. And if we go ahead and scroll down a little bit more, we can see more information. Now they're recommending that you have at least two years of hands-on experience with AWS. And that's because once you start getting into specialties, you're at a higher level. You should have a better grasp on using the cloud. And if we scroll down here a little bit more, we can see the information about the exam details. So multiple choice questions are what you're gonna see. You can take the exam online or at a testing center. It's 170 minutes to complete the exam and it's gonna run you $300. Here we have the website for the Microsoft Certified Azure Security Engineer Associate. And if we scroll down here, we can see a little bit more about this. But the required exam that you have to take is the AZ500 exam. So that's the one you'll wanna sign up for. But you're gonna learn things like managing identity and access, implementing security platform protection, manage security operations, secure data and applications. And if you keep scrolling down here, you can see some of the free training that they have available for you. So if you actually want to do any of this learning, you can go through and click these and these will give you tasks and things that you can do. And then of course, here's the exam information, $165 for the exam. So you'll notice this exam is significantly less than every other single certification that has been on this list. That could be a useful thing as far as getting very certified. Question of the day, which of these certifications are you planning on getting in the year 2021? Did I miss a certification that you think is better? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we went over the best entry-level cybersecurity certifications to get in the year 2021. Remember, there's a lot of different paths to becoming a cybersecurity expert and you don't have to break the bank to get there. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.